I believe there are three things that Victorinox needs to upgrade in their Swiss Army knives to stay relevant. And I first started to notice this a few months back when I reviewed this Roxon multi-tool, followed up by this Rock tool, but was truly solidified when I recently reviewed the Civivi Sendi, which is a pocket knife, but has a few implements hidden in the handle. And what I've found is that every time I've posted a video on Swiss Army Knife alternatives, you guys have shown a massive amount of interest. So it's gonna be a ton of fun as we explore this thought exercise. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical, let's dive in. Now, before we hit number one, I wanna make one thing clear to all you keyboard warriors who love your Swiss Army Knives. I am not anti-Swiss Army Knife. There is a place for them. They are synonymous with multi-tools and edge tools the world over. They're one of the most popular multi-tools worldwide, and they build 45,000 Swiss Army Knives a day, which adds up to over 16 million Swiss Army Knives built every day year. So the demand is absolutely there. But that doesn't mean that they could do a lot better. And our first thing that I would love to see change that many of you agreed with is an update to the blade steel. The steel used on most Swiss Army knives that we would be familiar with is 1.4110. This is a steel that is very rust resistant. It is relatively tough and very easy to resharpen. But there are much tougher steels out there, and there are steels that will hold a much better edge. You basically look at a Swiss Army knife and it's gonna dull on you. So if you use your tool regularly, you have to also resharpen it quite regularly. And if we go to the comment section, Mice K VG1 states better steel would be something that they would wanna see. William Hobbs, 3745. Number one thing they like to see changed on Victorinox and Swiss Army knives, better steel. Not fixing it. States, number one thing, better steel. And there are tons more, but Steve Jones, 4029, really hits the nail on the head where I sit with this. He says, better blade steel, give me nice 14C, 28N, and that would change everything. And I cannot agree more. We don't need some sort of super premium steel like Magna Cut or L Max or something on these Swiss Army knives just something to like double the edge retention on what we currently have. That's still relatively inexpensive. There are other options like Nitro V and other similar steels could really bolster the performance without having to raise the cost too much. As a quick example, I just saw a Fox Knives multi-tool that looks very similar to a Victorinox and it's made in Italy with N690 steel, which would also be a great option. Uh, definitely would bring the edge retention up quite a bit. And that was about $60 last I checked, definitely in the reasonable range for that type of build quality and material. But leave a comment below. What do you think about an upgraded blade steel? And if so, what would be your preference on Swiss Army knives? And as we're about to look at the second upgrade I'd like to see in my Swiss Army knives, I do wanna invite you guys to like and subscribe, become part of the Gideon's Tactical crew here and get notified every week when I put up new videos. And I do wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Huckberry. And they are an excellent source for high quality gear and apparel. And there's one apparel brand in particular that's been redefining the way I stay cool and comfortable while I'm on the move in all of my activities and it's well. For instance, the Soul Performance Collection, which is crafted from Welland's signature cool soft fabric, providing incredible comfort, quick drying tech, along with UV protection. So I stay protected and comfortable whether I'm hitting the trail or casting a line with the Soul Performance hoodie or snagging a quick jog and wanting to catch some rays at the lake in the Soul Performance tee. But Wellen's got you covered in the lower half as well with their performance lined swim trunks. And I gotta tell you guys, these swim trunks aren't just for the water, though they excel in that, but I've used them on many of my active adventures, going on hikes with them, jogging with them, doing all sorts of different activities. And after that long day of adventuring, I can hop in the hot tub with my wife and they work perfectly in that environment as well. So I've found that whatever adventures I have come across this summer, Wellen has got me covered. And these are just a few of the designs that Wellen Activewear offers. So I will have a link in the description box below this video as well 
Wells is popping up in the corner right now over to the Huckberry website, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code that you can apply towards your very first purchase. So I invite you to discover the perfect blend of style, comfort, and performance in Wellen activewear. So upgrade number two that I'd love to see has to do with this little dangler keyring right here. The fact that their mid to full size multi-tools do not come with a pocket clip drives me nuts because I now just have to throw the tool flying around and you know bump it into my keys, taking it up and bulging out my pocket more. I have to find a different pocket, you know, put it in my fifth pocket. Hopefully I, that particular pair of pants has a fifth pocket or I have to attach it to my key ring and you know, then it's hanging off of my ignition switch possibly, you know, wearing that out. Or I have to go spend $20 for certain models to get a pocket clip. This pocket clip currently on Amazon is 20 bucks. Now, if you love your models and you want a pocket clip, it's popping up right now. There's a link right there as well as in the description box over to Amazon where you can explore that. But this thing, ugh, like th this tinker is in, in the, its layout is a, a great little budget friendly tool under 30 bucks. I have to pay two thirds of that just to put a pocket clip on there, making it much easier when there is a pocket clip to access my tool. I can pull it out and use the blade. And to just have something like what is on the Civivi Sendi would be perfect. Look at that pocket clip right there. Recessed screws, it's ambi. We got little screw plates right there. Doesn't impede the ability to have something like a toothpick or in this case, tweezers can still all be embedded in there. You could remove it if you're in some country that doesn't allow for pocket clips and deployment that way. And I know that's what makes a lot of these other tools very desirable as they come standard with pocket clips. And most of you guys agree. On Instagram, Rallatory213, States pocket clip for the camper size tool would be excellent. Rise 505 Rise States pocket clip. I'm doing my best to do these names, guys. Arvine Playthrough 5459 on YouTube says a pocket clip would make a lot of difference. And I cannot agree more. So to have an integrated system for many of their designs, not all, but many of their designs that are medium to large size that could do a loop over pocket clip that is ambidextrous, uh, I don't think would take a lot of engineering. It could really accentuate the desire to put that in my pocket instead of my pocket knife or my Leatherman or a rocks on or whatever it is because I just can access it easier. I don't have to fish around in my pocket and it doesn't bulge out my pants. I know what you guys are thinking, keep your minds out of the gutter. But let me know, maybe I'm missing it and not having a pocket clip really streamlines the process. Leave a comment below. And throughout the video, I am gonna have links to Swiss Army Knife alternatives that I really enjoy or see a lot of value or interest in that we've been discussing in this video. That'll all be included in the description box below. Now, before we get to the third and final upgrade, you know, thing that I want changed and would love to see changed on my Victorinox and Swiss Army knives to make them more desirable to use. I wanna hit on a few upgrades that you guys mentioned that I didn't even really think of out of the gate, but make total sense. And the first one comes from Instagram and Travisaurus Rex, love, <laughs> love that, that handle, says, I would love to have an inline screwdriver, like what we have right here and what you get on like most other multi-tools in states that you know, the T design, like a corkscrew, is fine for torque, but man, is it difficult to get into tight places. And it is awkward because you're doing like this weird kind of handle, you know, turn. It's never been ideal for me to have this type of Phillips head screwdriver. So uh, specifically Phillips head. So to have something like this that is in line, that acts and operates and actuates like a normal screwdriver, because the Swiss Army tools are already designed kind of in that shape, would be awesome and ideal. And amax.edc mentioned something that was echoed quite a bit, which was about the handle scales, that the polymer handle scales are very slick and definitely feel somewhat cheap. So to start seeing more models that either have like the rubber inlays, like some do, but ideally forms of like G10, not be difficult, particularly in this day and age and give a little bit of texture, uh, but also, you know, micarta, things like that, that people don't have to go to aftermarket to do that. They can just get just a slightly upgraded material with some better texture on the tools would be great and make it feel a little bit, you know, 
better quality in some ways. And I do invite you to leave comments as well throughout this video on things you would love to see upgraded in Swiss Army knives that would make them more desirable and more likable for you to carry and put in regular rotation. Because I have several, I mean, I have several and they have certain capabilities, they just don't, they just don't get used a lot because of the things that we're talking about. Now, how about to that third and final upgrade that would make carrying a Swiss Army knife just so much more enjoyable for users like myself, and it was almost across the board in your guys' comments. It's deployment and lockup. Having some form of one-handed deployment and a locking mechanism would be excellent. Now, I understand that part of the draw to Swiss Army knives and their worldwide success is the fact that most, not all, but most of their models are two-handed deploying, having to use a nail nick, and slip joint meaning no locking mechanism. So most countries allow them to be used and you're not breaking the law, breaking the law. But for us users here in the States and many places worldwide, having a locking mechanism would be amazing. Now, Swiss Army knives already have that. They have one-handed deploying tools like this model right here. This has a great eyelet hole, easy, you know, it takes some flicking, but I can get it. And they have an integrated lock right here, hidden underneath the logo that act disengages that liner lock right there. You press that and boom, close the blade. So, I mean, even integrating something like that or something similar, it'd be really cool to have some streamlined stuff. You know, now that we have these um, forward flippers that almost hide the whole profile, you can just see how similar the Sendy in profile is to um, that Victorinox and you just pull back, boom, deploys, liner lock right there. And you could easily get without too much difficulty, a few tools, even two or three, you know, like a, a driver, uh, maybe a pair of scissors, one or two other items without having to thicken up this too much. And you get a lot of versatility. And I believe that there is would be a huge market for these smaller size tools on certain models. Not all, We're not, I'm not saying to do this to every single model, but maybe start producing some upgrades like we've been talking about in already tried and true and some new models as well. I do feel like Swiss Army knives need to start competing in this space because we are seeing good solid tools already coming on the market and coming online that are starting to take up this space. But if you were to ask me or show me tomorrow that there was a model like this, but had all the things we've been talking about, slightly better steel, a locking mechanism and a pocket clip, I'm gonna go and gravitate to the Victorinox first before I would ever gravitate to any of these other models. That's me, that's my mileage, that's my opinion, and I appreciate all your guys' feedback as well. And I look forward to reading the comments in this video. And I hope this content and content like it give us food for thought as the users and also potential developers that may be watching, but also to kind of help push Victorinox in this direction with some of these things that we've talked about today. And maybe they'll see this video, you know, and maybe it'll start the juices flowing and give a market and, and accentuate the market that we, particularly here in the States, who love our tools and yes, love our Swiss Army knives, would gravitate to even more with some of these upgrades. Appreciate you guys hanging with me today. It's been fun. I hope you have been not only entertained, all you not entertained, but also informed and uh, just all you blade addicts and all you EDC lovers, thanks for hanging. Appreciate it. Enjoy the community we have here. Uh, again, subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember to stay equipped, stay prepared. I'll see you out there.